Hi guys, I'm Jennifer Malloway. I'm a dog trainer and behavior consultant, and my job is to help you have the most magical relationship possible with your dog. And today, we are talking about how to be a good leader, over here, <laughs> a good leader for your dog. Um, let's take this down for just a second. Um, welcome, everybody. Grim's <laughs> call, yes, that's exactly what she would say. Says he wants to get all those, <laughs> Bring home all those dogs from the countdown video. <laughs> I want to bring them all home too, and it's very hard to say no when one is actually available. David is constantly having to tell me. Actually, he usually says yes. I'm the one who has to keep us all in check. But anyway, <laughs> um, so yeah, we're going to talk about leadership today because that is an idea that you hear talked about a lot when... Anytime you're near dogs, it seems like no matter where you go, you'll hear people talk about leadership, how to be a good leader. Um, and this sounds like a really good idea. Hands down, being a good leader is a good thing, right? You know, people listen to leaders, people follow leaders, people maybe take orders from leaders. Um, that's something we kind of want from our dogs, right? Sounds like it can't go wrong, but of course it can. <laughs> Um, otherwise, we wouldn't be talking about it, right? Um, welcome, Paul. I can't see. Oh my gosh, that emoji is so small. I can't even tell what it is. <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, this this concept. Oh, hi, Sai. <laughs> Good to see you here. Um, this concept of leadership, I think, has been kind of twisted into something that's actually not so good for you or your dog. Um, when leadership gets combined with the outdated, debunked theories of dominance in dogs and pack hierarchy, it, it turns into this, into this thing that, that produces ideas that lead us down very, very wrong paths. <laughs> um, you get people suggesting certain things uh, that will teach the dog their role or, and, and that therefore, once they know their role, they will magically just know how to behave in all these other situations. If it were only that easy, right? <laughs> it, it sounds nice. It sounds like a very enticing idea. Um, but the kinds of ideas that come up when, when people t talk about leadership are you will get, uh, you will get leadership paired with suggestions like alpha rolling your dog. If you haven't heard the term alpha rolling, then good, move on, shut your ears, you don't need to listen to this. Alpha rolling is uh, the idea of rolling your dog onto their back, effectively pinning them um, as supposedly a way to assert your dominance, show your dog that you are in control, you are the boss. Um, but it's a terrible idea, no one should ever do it. Forget you ever heard about it. <laughs> um, other ideas uh, that get paired with leadership are like staring the dog down, which unless you're like staring lovingly into their eyes, um, staring can be a, a very threatening thing to do to a dog. And and maybe that's maybe that's the point. Maybe they're like, if if you threaten your dog, uh, they will just back down and say, OK, you're the boss, you're the leader. Um, but I, you know, in, in the framework within which I operate, uh, in, in the dynamic that I like to have with dogs, I generally think that threatening them is a terrible idea. Um, threatening anybody is generally a terrible idea. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so, so eye contact can, can be, um, can be a bad thing. Uh, threatening is definitely a bad thing. Um, so we don't want to do that, but usually, or, or not usually, but sometimes, um, that's one of the things that is suggested that we do to assert ourselves as the leader. Um, some other crazy ideas are like hissing at your dog or like making, making noise, like what? No, just no. <laughs> um, some other things like touching their food. Don't touch your dog's food. That's, that, do you like people touching your food? Does it make you feel like they're a leader that you should respect and follow? No, and it's not gonna work that way for dogs either. I'm very sorry to disappoint anyone who 
who really thought that that was helping. It's not. It's likely making things worse. Um, okay, how about another one? Um, always take the high ground. Where do these ideas come from? Like, really? No. You, your dog can be higher than you. They can sit on the back of the couch and be higher than you, and they are not going to take over your household. It's just not going to happen, and it's perfectly fine. If you want to allow them up there, let it, let it go. It's fine. Um, uh, how about um, always walk in front of them or always uh, or, or don't let them go through doorways in front of you? This doing this is not going to make you a leader. It might be a good idea for safety's sake, but it's not going to uh, assert any kind of dominance and it is not going to make your dog respect you in any context. Um, Kevin says these sound like the stupidest things. I mean, you, we, I maybe should have called this like the stupidest dog training ideas I've ever heard. But, <laughs> but, and, 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 and they are bad advice. I will, I will say this. Um, I hesitate to use the word stupid because in some, like when you frame things the right way, and, and this is key, right? When, when someone selling themselves as a dog trainer presents this information in the right light, uh, they frame it a certain way, it can sound like a good idea. And I can't blame people for listening to someone who is a supposed expert and, and thinking like, okay, well, they said that's what I have to do. So I guess I have to do it if I want my dog, dog to listen. Like that, and that's kind of how these ideas get, get passed down and, and spread. And they're not good ideas, but the way that they are framed is really, really important. And I'm gonna give you an example in a moment here. Dizzy's gonna help me demonstrate something, which, I feel is a really good illustration of um, some of the nuances that are so important. Uh, April says, I've heard the doorways one. I've heard the doorway, the doorways one. I've heard all of these things. And if I didn't have other people, other mentors um, giving me better information, I don't know. How would I know? You know? Um, so anyway, yeah, these just, these are, <laughs> these are, ideas that are commonly presented along with the idea that you have to be the leader, your dog will never listen to you if you don't be the leader, and this is how you become a leader. It's not. But let me continue. So, um, yeah, yeah, so to always take the high ground, always walk in front, um, you have to eat first. Like, this one is usually explained away by saying, you know, like, well, in a wolf pack, the alpha male and female eat first. You guys, the alpha male and female eat first because they hunted, they got the food first, and then they brought it back to their babies. Like, that's it. You don't have to eat first to be dominant over your dog. Um, hola, Efrain. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> um, so... You, you don't you don't you don't have to eat before your dog it's eat whenever you want uh have your dog this one i, I read today and it was like just randomly just have your dog move out of your way a few times a day like if they're lying comfortably just just walk at them and shuffle your feet and like make them move like uh, guys it feels it feel when i read these things sometimes it feels like we're really heading in the wrong direction but anyway oh thank you my set looks amazing thanks <laughs> dr elo um <laughs> um and then finally one of the very worst ideas i've ever heard uh is to grab their muzzle just not for any reason just randomly just grab your dog's muzzle uh talk about one of the worst ideas you've ever heard no, 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 no. N nothing about any of these things is going to make you your dog's leader. Um, these things are just acting like a bully or maybe, maybe generously a drill sergeant, but not a leader. Um, Kevin says, if my dog is laying in my way, I just lay down next to her and cuddle. That's probably bad training too, but no. I Honestly, I do that too. I do that pretty much like all day. <laughs> Ask David. <laughs> um, 
Yeah. No. <laughs> I mean, maybe I could see. Okay. So, so let's talk about that nuance guys. Right. So some of these ideas, like, um, they're not, they're not all inherently bad. It's, it's really in how you frame them. Um, and, but, but that's, that's what worries me. And that's why I want to talk about it is because the language that, that encases these ideas can affect how they are carried out. And if someone is like, you should do these things to be the leader and they don't give you any other instruction or any other context, um, people like they do them, they upset their dogs, their dogs display more fear or aggression. And then they're like, my dog must inherently be a bad dog or unmanageable or impossible. So I have to send them to a trainer who's, or a boot camp, you know, who's going to really straighten this dog out. And it's just like one, one step after another down this road. That's like, you didn't have to do that at all. No dog needs to go down that road. None. Um, I am, I am, I mean, if I can, if you can forgive me a, a small rant here for a second, I am so tired of hearing these supposed expert celebrity dog trainers saying like, I take the impossible dogs. I, I train the dogs that no one else will take, you know, cause otherwise they'd be euthanized. No, absolutely not. I know trainers who are following the same methods that I do fully force-free, positive reinforcement, no punishment necessary, no harsh methods, no harsh training tools, and they are taking those impossible dogs and getting better results. Nobody needs a, a heavy hand, okay? All right, rant over. Um, so, but but this this nuance, it, it matters, right? So, okay, so like the example of um, maybe not letting your dog dash through doorways ahead of you, That's a, that could be a safety thing. You might actually want to teach your dog to, to yes, not run through doorways ahead of you because they could run out into traffic and we don't want that. Um, so that could be a good rule to teach them, uh, but it has nothing to do with being a leader. Uh, thank you, April. She says, preach. <laughs> um, or let me, see, like, looking at this list, like, uh, I mean, the, the, the taking the high ground thing, like, if you don't want your, or, or, or simply just not letting your dog on the furniture, like, if you want that to be a rule in your home, that's totally fine. Make that a rule, but it's not going to make you a leader. It's not going to like tell your dog to listen to you in any other way other than don't get on the furniture. Um, that rule is fine. In fact, we, we don't let Dizzy on the couch. It's, it's our rule, but like it's, it's, it has nothing to do with leadership. Um, what else might be I mean, I said like the, the staring, like if you want to look lovingly into your dog's eyes and your dog's okay with that, by all means, but like, don't use it as a threat. Um, if your dog likes their belly rubbed and they roll onto their back and offer you their belly in this context, that's fine, but do not forcibly put your dog on your back per the alpha roll. Like, um, and I said, I was gonna, um, let Dizzy, uh, or ask Dizzy rather to help me uh, demonstrate another instance where nuance is crucial. Uh, if you want to help, hey Dizzy, if I can get him to wake up, Diz, do you want to you want to hop up? Come on. <laughs> okay, so hi Karen, welcome, welcome. Um, so we're gonna have Dizzy. Hi baby boy. Um, one of one of the the ideas on this this bad idea list, right, was um, grabbing your dog's muzzle. Now, I I have heard trainers suggesting uh, that in order to show your dog that you are the leader, that you should just, and, and they, they explained it in this way, that you should just like gently, just, you know, when when you're in like a calm, cuddly mood, just, just like grab your dog's muzzle. And like, I mean, <laughs> he keeps, oh baby, can you get off the desk though, please? Thank you. Um, and, and like, that's, like I said, it's, it's got nothing to do with leadership. It is not going to do any such thing. It might upset your dog, depending on what your dog is comfortable with. But like, it's not, it's not like just as a, as a standalone idea, just grab your dog's muscle. Not a great idea. Now you might want your dog to let you grab their muzzle, right? If you, <laughs> if you wanted to, um, 
he's been such a cuddlebug today. <laughs> you just want more and more love. Um, hey, baby, I want you to, I want to ask you to show them something though. So I need you to sit first, maybe. Um, and okay, so I have been working on training him to uh, let me have my hand on his muzzle. Um, and so I'll show you what we've worked on. Hopefully he will uh, do this with me <laughs> right now. Um, but there's some things I want you to look for, right? Um, and, and hopefully with the camera angle and everything, it'll be clear. But um, look for... <laughs> I know, I know, we're getting impatient. I called him over too soon. Um, but I want you to uh, watch how I'm gonna present my hand and then I'm gonna hold it still. I'm not gonna move. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna grab his muzzle. I'm gonna wait for him to put his muzzle into my hand um, because that's what we've worked on. That's how it's, it's present, uh, been presented. Um, so now that we're ready, Diz, would you like to hop up? He's like, no, you like, brought me up there for nothing. <laughs> Come on! I know, I know. I promised. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Hand. And. Okay. Um, and if I leave it there, he might. Um, <laughs> occasionally, he won't, he doesn't do it every time, but occasionally if I just leave my hand there and I'm not touching, he'll like nudge my hand up. <laughs> kind of did it that time. Um, but so maybe you can see there that like, I'm not grabbing his muzzle. I'm offering him an opportunity to put his muzzle in my hand and then he's getting paid for it. Um, okay, thanks baby boy. That's good. Um, We've done it this way. You may also have seen him, he did it a moment ago and he does it all the time, often when I'm asking for something else because it's kind of become a default behavior for him. But if I present my hand a different way, I get muzzle in the hand this way. <laughs> um, so, um, and and he's always paid for this, right? This is, this is his job um, and he gets a paycheck. Thank you, bud. You can go lay down if you want. Um, it's not necessary, but <laughs> um, so yeah, so it is not grabbing. It is a hand on a muzzle, yeah. And if I, if you just saw a random video of somebody doing this, that might be all you see is yeah, someone put their hand on the dog's muzzle for whatever reason. Um, but there's there's the nuance of it's his choice. Um, there's also things that you can't see in a video. There's you can't see that. Um, if he ever were to back away or look uncomfortable, I stop. I, I back off because that's um, that's an, another instance. It's it's money in the bucket of building his trust and, and his knowledge that he knows I'm never going to force him beyond his comfort level. He knows um, that I am never going to ask more or do more to him than he has agreed to, right? Like this, this is a contract. When I present my hand like this, he knows that if he puts his hand there for maybe a certain length of time or lets me mess with his gums and his teeth, he gets paid for it. Um, but we've worked up to that um, and I've and, and built this thing. It wasn't just, okay, I got a dog, I gotta show him I'm the leader, so I'm gonna touch his muzzle, no. Thank you, baby. <laughs> You're such a good sport. Um, so yeah, and, and all of that you can't see in a video. So when you read a blog or you watch somebody's YouTube video and they're like, here's how you be a leader. Uh, and they tell you to do these things. There's, it's, there's a disconnect. There's a, there's a lack of nuance there. And that nuance is so, so crucial. And it's, it's, it's hard for me to like, like I, you know, there's a new dog training TV show that came out recently and I watched a couple episodes and it's so, it's hard for me to watch it because I know that like some of the things that are said on the show could be good advice, but it's, it's when they get twisted or, or they're lacking some crucial piece that I'm like, oh man, this is really going to mislead people. And so anyway, I'm here to, uh, lead the way. Uh, sort of. Um, okay. So, 
anyway, it's 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 why getting your advice from a TV show or celebrity dog trainer can be ooh, just dangerous. You want to you just want to be careful. Um, so anyway, all all of that list, that list of like bad advice um it's not going to somehow just tell your dog that you are the leader and and magically make them behave in all contexts um even even the language that they use in if you, when you search this kind of thing it's like you know establish leadership or or how to take up your position as the leader or or how to um your dog wants you to to step up as the leader um they they just give the wrong impression like and, and here's here's where we get into the nuance, right? So yes, your dog does need a leader, um, but in a sense, right? Like what if, what if we replaced the word leader with the word guide or the word coach or the word parent? Um, you know, all of those words also imply uh, a form of leadership, um, but maybe without all, all of that baggage, all of that negative, connotation <laughs> um so and and there are different types of leaders right um if if you google leadership uh you'll get all, all sorts of uh websites you know and they're they might tell you there's like nine forms of leadership or six forms or you know, whatever um i i find i find that it's easiest um to just think about who would you like to have leading you um who do you think of as a good leader? Like, have you had a good, did you have parents that you thought were good leaders? Have you had a good boss or a good coach? Um, you know, who, who, who have you enjoyed being led by? Um, so I thought maybe we'd play a little game uh, called good leader, bad leader. <laughs> and uh, here's where we're gonna bring up our, um, our little emojis here. So I, <laughs> Dizzy, you don't get a vote. I'm sorry. You got, you got the leader you got and hopefully you like it. <laughs> Can you get off though, please? It's a slippery little mouse pad, isn't it? Um, I know I gave you food and now you think there's going to be more. So anyway, okay. So we're going to play good leader, bad leader. Uh, I'm going to tell you how, something about a leader and you guys are going to help me out um, by telling me either <laughs> it's a good leader with the heart emoji or a bad leader with our little devil emoji. Um, <laughs> baby, you're slipping and sliding all over the desk. Do you want to go lie down or, or maybe go ask your dad to get you a Kong? How about that? <laughs> um, I don't know if that's going to be enough. We might have to move the chair. Sorry, dude. <laughs> um, okay, so who's with me? Who wants to play? Anybody? Give me a thumbs up if we're playing the game. Hopefully it's not just me by myself because otherwise, you know, I know the answers. So that's not, <laughs> that's not any fun. Um, okay, so <laughs> Dizzy, do you want to play? You want to right hand, left hand? <laughs> Karen, thank you. Dr. Hila, let's go. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, all right. Would you like a leader who communicates clearly about expectations and rules and boundaries? Is this good leader, bad leader? Good leader, bad leader. Um, do we, do we want to have rules and boundaries? Sounds like a good thing. I like to have, I like to have rules for you. Like I said, if we have a rule, don't don't be on the couch. Um, <sighs> let's go, let's go. I'm seeing some hearts. Dr. Ely says good leader. Karen says good leader. April says good leader. Awesome, yeah. Rules, boundaries, setting, uh, communicating expectations clearly, very good thing. Um, you you have to you have to have these things, especially when you've got a dog in your home. They don't come into the world knowing how to act. They need they need you to let them know. Um, a bad leader would expect you to to guess at what what's expected of you. Like if you started a job and 
and uh, they didn't tell you how to do it or they didn't tell you all of your responsibilities and and then they got mad at you when you did it wrong or forgot something like how frustrating would that be um, or if they told you but then they changed the rules all the time they were inconsistent um, or, or followed you around being like that's wrong nope sorry uh-uh <laughs> like no that's frustrating um, so yes a good leader is gonna have rules and and boundaries but they're gonna communicate them clearly and be consistent about them okay next one um, Blue heart is for Dizzy. Aw, Diz, you got a heart. <laughs> um, okay, so what about the leader who puts you in situations that you are unprepared for? Or, or you're just out of your depth? Um, hey, Diz, what if I asked you to uh, run around in a group of dogs who are banging into you and they're being awfully rude? Am I gonna expect you to be on your best behavior? No. Karen says, devil, bad leader. Yeah, no. A good leader is going to set you up for success. They're going to give you all the tools that you need to get it right. Um, whether whether you're a parent or a coach or a, a, a boss in a job. Um, yeah, if if you're left to, to deal with situations that you don't know how to handle, that's not good leadership. A good leader is going to give you those tools, set you up for success. Um, with our dogs, that looks like using management um, so that they can only make the right the right decisions. You know, it means picking up our socks so that we don't get mad at them when they steal them and chew holes in them, like someone did recently. I, I bought really nice, expensive socks for myself and found a hole in one, and guess whose fault that was? Me. Um, okay, so next one. Uh, all right, good leader, bad leader, who listens to feedback, who can take uh, maybe even criticism from their subordinates. This, do you have something to say? Would you like to give some feedback? Is your feedback that your chair is too far away to paw at me now? <laughs> Possibly, but here you go. <laughs> um, good leader or bad leader who can take feedback and criticism um do, 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 do. dizzy do you know the answer do you want to tell me the answer obviously a good leader is gonna listen to feedback um it, it is incredibly frustrating if you've ever had a boss who doesn't listen to you, who doesn't listen when you tell them that something's not working, or even a parent when you try to express your feelings that like, this curfew's not fair. Some, uh, uh, a leader, a parent even, who is like, you know what, I'm the parent, I make the rules. That's really frustrating. And it doesn't, it doesn't impart uh, good judgment or good skills. Um, so yes, a good leader is going to be one who listens. Scott, I love the giant emojis. Thank you. <laughs> I thought we'd have some fun today. Um, okay. So, so yes, uh, feed, being able to take feedback and criticism as a leader is important. Um, and, and as we go through these guys, I, well, let me give you the next one. So, um, all right. Good leader, bad leader, one who gives orders. Um, and as you, as you give me your answers about that, um, this, <laughs> you getting frustrated? Um, oh yeah. So I was going to say, um, as, as we go through these guys, um, I'm thinking about me as, me as, uh, as the subordinate, you know, like who do I want to be led by? Um, and I'm not even thinking about dog specific contexts necessarily. Um, you know, I am thinking about myself as the employee or myself as the child or the mentee, you know, um, I am thinking about what, what I want from, from a leader. Um, and I think that thinking about that, thinking about it that way, um, gives a lot better insight about how you might want to be as a leader, you know, by thinking about who you'd want to follow. Um, so, uh, let's see. 
All right, so good leader, bad leader, who gives orders. Um, this one, is this one tricky? Is this why I'm not getting any answers yet? <laughs> um, I, I kind of, it might be tricky um, because I'm gonna argue that the good leader, instead of giving orders, asks nicely. Um, maybe not if you're a drill sergeant uh, or in the military, but Dr. Elif says, depends on how orders are given. So yeah, I mean, there are times that we, we ask something of our dogs and like, they they don't really have a choice. Um, so yes, absolutely depends on how the orders are given. Um, but because I, I talk a lot about how language matters, how we frame things matters. Um, I think of when I give Dizzy a command or an order, um, I always think of it like a question. I'm asking, will you sit? But it's, it's why I even, um, you know, in, instead of teaching him sit as a behavior, I, hey Diz, do you want to show this? Can you stand? <laughs> I, I, I just I just heard myself. I just caught myself saying, can you stand? I mean, I literally make it a question. Of course, the cue is just stand. Um, <laughs> and okay, here, wait, let's get our box back. I'm sorry. Okay. Hop up. Have a seat. Okay, so instead of teaching him sit, I taught him have a seat just because the way, that, because when people hear me say that to him, I, I want them to see me demonstrating that it can be a question and you can absolutely get great compliance that way. <laughs> um, and frankly, as if I'm being led, if someone asks me, I am a thousand percent more likely to do something. Heck, if I'm not being led, if some stranger asks me to do some random thing for them, I am a thousand percent more likely to do it just because if they asked me versus if they came up and were like, do this. Screw you. Who are you? No. <laughs> um, sorry, Diz, you did such a good job. Thank you, bub. Um, so uh, Scott says, good leaders are willing to do the work they are asking you to do. That's a really good point, too. <laughs> um, Karen says, depends on how they say it to me. Yeah, exactly, you guys. So words matter, right? Um, so if I'm if I'm teaching a dog, I don't call it commands. I call it cues. Um, and when I ask something, it is a question. And the, there's more to that too, right? The, the other reason why I frame it or I, I think of it as I'm asking a question is because if my dog doesn't do something, there's a reason. There, he has a good reason. We said on, on Monday, you know, that the, the dog's never wrong. Um, the dog is always doing exactly as he's been trained to do or something's going on that is preventing him from being able to. And that's not his fault either. He's an animal. Um, so if he's not doing it, it's I've asked too much or the environment is too overwhelming. Something else is more more pressing. Maybe it's it's putting him on edge and he's like, I I want to sit for you. I want to do the thing you asked, but I have to deal with this situation over here first. Can you, can maybe you help me deal with the, the cat across the street? Um, and then I can come sit, you know, there's, there's always a reason. So if I asked and he didn't do it, it's not his fault. Uh, Karen says, if I am asked nicely, then yeah, but if I am demand hatefully, <laughs> then I will not do it. Or I should say, I wouldn't try my best. And Karen, that's an interesting point that I love to talk about discretionary effort. So um, if you have a boss or a parent or somebody uh, telling you to do it or, or asking, but not in a nice way, um, see, there's all this nuance here. Um, if, if they're doing that, you might do it, you might comply, but you're gonna do the bare minimum. If you are asked nicely and you have a good relationship and you know that this person appreciates you and you are rewarded for your efforts, you're gonna do more than is expected. And that's that difference, that's that discretionary effort. And when it comes to teaching your dog fun things like tricks and, and well, hell, not even tricks, like anything, when it comes to teaching, teaching your dog anything, when you see literally right in front of you, this discretionary effort, it is, I mean, it's just this, it's awesome. It's just this magical thing. It gives me goosebumps. I want all of, all of you to have that. <laughs> um, so yeah, how you ask is important. Um, 
April says, ah, so true. He has a reason that he's not doing something I'm asking. So, so simple, but I need, yeah, it, I'm, I'm glad <laughs> that, that you're hearing things that you need to hear. Um, cause it's something I forget all that, that fact is something I forget a lot of the time. So it's good to remind myself too. Um, okay. Let's, let's keep playing. Um, did I, okay. So he said, asks nicely. Um, all right. Good leader, bad leader who demands respect. This is respect is something that gets talked about a lot. Um, it, especially in, in the context of like being a leader for your dog. Um, you know, you, you hear that they, you, you need your dog to respect you, which I mean, yeah, I would like a dog to respect me. Hey, do you respect me? Does it feel kind of funny? Like, like if I sit here and like ask him like, Hey man, like, do you respect me? Like in, in my head, that situation, it just seems ridiculous. Like that could be a, a parody of something, right? Like, could, I, I'm giving it away here, but guys, dogs don't understand respect the way that we do. Respect is, is this very complex idea laden with all of these moral rules and, and like, it's, it's just, it's not actually something that dogs are capable of. <laughs> um, so yeah, so, okay. So I, heck I gave it away, but yeah. Um, bad leader, bad leader is one who, who demands respect of you. If you, I mean, if you've ever had a boss who, who does this, who's like, I, Oh, he can have that. Okay. I'm like, anytime I hear him chewing on something, I'm like, what do, what do you have? <laughs> um, so yeah, if you, if you've had a, a, a boss or, or anybody who's like, who just feels that because of their position in relation to you, that they deserve your respect. Like, doesn't it kind of, there's like a hair floating around here. <laughs> um, doesn't it kind of make you feel like, like, like you almost just want to mock them or like, like who, like, who are you? No. Um, I, I mean, it, at least how I think is that respect is earned. It doesn't matter how high ranking you are. Respect is earned. Um, and y y you know, it's, it's not owed. Um, and yeah, and April says, I don't think dogs have a concept of respect like humans do. I, I agree. Even if you ask 10 different people, you might get 10 different answers. And that's true too. Like, yeah, you could, you could definitely have different, different definitions of, of what respect looks like, you know? Um, Karen says, I had a boss one time that you could only speak to him and his wife if they spoke to you first. Are you kidding me? That's ridiculous. Needless to say, I didn't work there very long. And that, I mean, there you go, right? Like, like nobody wants, nobody wants to be around that. No one wants to be like, feel, feel bossed around by a person who's like that. Like, no, I'm partial geek. Thank you for joining us. Respect is earned. Respect is offered and given. It is not, it is not something to be, to be taken from a subordinate. It is something the subordinate offers. Um, at least that is how I think of it. Um, and, but anyway, it is really all beside the point because dogs don't understand respect. They don't have it. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry to disappoint anyone who, who really thought that that was, um, a thing, but nope. Um, okay. Next one guys, give me, yeah. Thank you, David. Give me a, a heart emoji or a devil emoji. Um, for the boss who celebrates your successes. Um, I mean, it can't be a party all the time, can it? <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, okay. So going back to, again, to like, do you want, I don't know, do you want a cheerleader for a boss? Do you want someone who's, Scott says heart? Uh, do you want a boss who acknowledges even, even your smallest efforts and I mean, yeah, like, that's just feeling appreciated, right? Thanks, Doc. <laughs> Kevin says heart. Thanks. Yeah, um, blue hearts for Dizzy, I guess, <laughs> today. <laughs> um, <laughs> bunch of devils says, devil, uh, impartial geek just wants to be the devil's advocate. Is that who, who you're playing here? Um, yeah, no, uh, I, I think yes, Th those of you who, <laughs> who said the heart, you're, you're correct. The, the good boss, the good leader is the one who is going to be there 
constantly telling you, heck yeah, you got it right. You, you did this awesome thing. Let's, let's party about it. I don't know. <laughs> um, a, uh, the, 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 the bad leader on the other hand, um, is gonna put more of their focus on criticizing your failures, right? And if I put it that way, like that's that's frustrating. That's that's the the job that you don't want to be at long, right? Like nobody wants to have somebody breathing down your neck, like telling you every time you got it wrong. Um, let's see, <laughs> impartial geek. I'm not sure how the game works. I just got here. You'll you'll pick it up. <laughs> Karen says. Uh, heart, not a party, but to be noticed for what you do. Okay, so yes, uh, party maybe was an exaggeration. Um, I I tend to call it like a party when I'm like when I notice my dog doing something right, like when he, especially when I didn't think he was gonna do it. Um, you know, but when when he gets it right, like we we were at the dog park the other day and. He, we've been working on some issues that he has at the dog park. Um, and yesterday we went and there were no issues. And as we were leaving, like I, I have to laugh cause I talk to him in public and people hear me and I like, I wonder what do these people think? Do they think I'm crazy? Um, but, but anyway, we were walking out and some people were within earshot and, and I was just like, Tizzy, I'm so proud of you. You, you know, and I'm like, these people must've been thinking like, you just, took your dog to the dog park like what what's to be proud of but but it, that's all it is it's just it's I call it a puppy party but like it's just noticing and letting them know right noticing is not enough like you have to let people know I want to for someone to let me know like when I'm doing right you know in this in this arena guys um just by you commenting and by you being here you know that lets me know that I'm doing something right um People, people need to know that they're on the right track and dogs need to know that too. Um, Kevin says, <laughs> Kevin says, I never want to work for Impartial Geek. <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> um, Grimskull, you're supposed to praise me, apparently. Yeah, David, get on it. These people need more praise and, and acknowledgement. <laughs> um, <laughs> praise, Jen, that's it. Um, thank you, Impartial Geek. Comment. I mean, hey, it's a comment. I'll take it. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, this is this one is huge, and it's the dis the the disparity, not just in not just with our dogs, but the disparity in our culture, and in every culture I've ever read about, the disparity between our focus on the negative and our acknowledgement of the positive is so wonky, like. Like it should be, wait, which side am I on here? <laughs> it's, this is how it is. It's like, we sometimes tell people when they're getting it right, but man, are we good at picking out when they get it wrong. And it should be this way. It should be way more this way. And it's a skill that I am working on and will continue working on every day until the day I die. And it is a skill that we could all really use um, is just noticing and praising the heck out of when people are doing it right even the little things every little thing this is the biggest thing i've learned in my journey about learning about behavior and behavior science and like this is it this is the one thing <laughs> get really good at noticing acknowledging rewarding the good uh impartial geek says i do praise you but you weren't praising yourself earlier. Let's discuss. Let's not discuss that because I don't want to cry. And you know I will cry like, like this. The heck? <laughs> I say heck, David. Don't. My, my language is very intentional most of the time, except when it's not. But anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, no. Uh, yeah, self-talk, guys, um, is huge. This, this disparity is, is probably even more exaggerated when we're dealing with ourself. You can be a kind, benevolent leader, guide, coach, parent, whatever you want to call it, for yourself. And we got to do the same thing for ourselves. Um, Grimskull says, NGL, NGL? I work for a TV station. 
<laughs> I work for a TV station and I would definitely tell you, tell our lifestyle show to have you on for pet segments. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that feedback and that acknowledgement. <laughs> um, okay, so thank you guys. You are the best. <laughs> That's why I love having you here. Um, and you are wonderful leaders in that, in that respect. Um, but broadcast TV is dying, so stick with what you're doing. <laughs> I, okay, then I will. Um, okay, so next one. Um, all right, G good leader, bad leader, uh, who issues blame when things go wrong. If you, when you, when you do do something wrong, do do. <laughs> Every time. Uh, when you do do something wrong, uh, good leader, bad leader will let you know Impartial Geek, are all these hearts for for me or for the good leader, bad leader question? Karen, you are the best as well. Aw. <laughs> you rock. Um, where are we here? Da -da -da -da. Issuing blame. April says devil. Impartial Geek, heart. Me? Oh, it's for me. Okay, great. <laughs> all right. Yes. Um, I'm going to say... Bad leader is the one who's issuing blame. This kind of goes uh, along with, with the, the last one about celebrating successes versus focusing on failures. Um, but when things do break down, do, do we issue blame or do we take responsibility? Um, the single one. Oh, the single one was my response. Uh, yeah, no. Um, the good leader is the one who's going to be taking responsibility. When Dizzy gets it wrong, I take responsibility for it. I don't blame him. Um, and that I, honestly, I think, I think this applies in, in any, uh, human context as well, but especially with our dogs who we just said, we just talked about, they, they can't get it wrong. It's they're they're animals. And they are behaving as the world has taught them to, um, <laughs> impartial geek do over. <laughs> I, I meant devil. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so like my sock example, you know, the hole in the sock. Yes, he did that. He did the bad thing, but it was my fault that I didn't set him up for success by keeping my socks out of his reach. I should know what I can reasonably expect from him. And so when there's a breakdown, the good leader, I'm a good leader. Um, the good leader will take responsibility. Yep. I know what we screwed up. Um, I will find a way to fix it going forward. Um, all right, next one. How about the flip side, right? Uh, when things go well, does the good leader take credit or give credit? No, that's not the question. Does, does the good leader uh, or bad leader take credit for all of the, for your dog acting like a perfect angel? Is it, is it your, your accomplishment? David, what does a bad leader call a pizzle? I won't say it. I won't say it. <laughs> We've been having a, uh, not an argument exactly, but um, about the bully sticks, you know, because if you didn't know, they are made out of uh, bull penis. Um, and I think I like to call it a pizzle because pizzle's really fun to say. Uh, David prefers to call it a dick because he thinks dick is fun to say. So, sorry if any children were watching, but, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, you can call it whatever you want. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so, again, flip side, Karen discussion. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so, so when things go well, when he does a really good job, I want to give him all the credit, you know, like, like, yes, I'm the trainer. Yes. I have spent years honing my skills and putting all of my time and work and effort into, into making him a good dog. But when he gets it right, it's him. He did it. He's, 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 you know, it's, it's his accomplishment. He got there. And I want to, I, I don't know. Like I, I, I st it goes back to celebrating him, um, celebrating the, the one, the, the one who's learning, the learner, the student, the mm, mentee, whatever you call it. Um, 
Grim Skull says debate. <laughs> they call those debates in polite company. Thank you. Thank you. I couldn't think of those words uh, like debate or discussion. <laughs> April says tricky one, but if they're invited to help me out here, uh, tricky one, but if they're invited to do a queue, how does that work? What was my, yeah, I'm not sure I understand. You'll have to elaborate. Um, and meanwhile, I will ask another question. Um, okay, good leader, bad leader, who asks this question. Um, do you have the attitude and the aptitude to achieve these results? If you're going for a job interview and, and the questions are, are you qualified? This is meant to be tricky. <laughs> Just so you know. Um, this one I kind of, yeah, well, I don't know. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, April, if they do a behavior and they, if they, <laughs> wait, if they do a behavior and they don't do it, if we ask them to do a behavior and they don't do it, then we take responsibility. But if they do do the behavior, then they get the credit. Tricky question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I think that made sense in my head. <laughs> if if they do something bad it's our fault but if they do something good it's their credit yeah 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 um <laughs> um impartial geek says devil yes okay so end of my day <laughs> um so if you um it this, this is going to become more clear if i if i tell you the the other like the good leader, the, the good leader side. Um, so if I say the bad leader is the one who asks, do you have the, the attitude, the, the right attitude, the right skill to get these results, then you're hired. Um, the good leader is going to ask questions like, who are you? They want to get to know you. They're going to ask, where are you in your journey? And how can they help you get to the next step to achieve results? they're gonna th be thinking about how they can help move you along. Maybe the interview was a bad, the bad example because you do wanna hire good people. But um, if, it's, if, if you've already got them, you've already got the employee, you've already got the dog, um, it does not matter what breed they are or, or their attitude because you're the parent, you're the, the leader, you're the guide. It is your job to help get them to where they need to be. See the difference? That was tricky. Um, okay, next one. <laughs> um, all right, good leader, bad leader who teaches at a reasonable pace. They give you one thing at a time. End of my day too, April. <laughs> um, oh gosh, it's almost five and there's a webinar I wanna get to. <laughs> so we're gonna we're, we're almost we're almost through here guys um so so i i'm gonna say that the good leader teaches at a as, at a reasonable pace the, the good leader understands that 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 growth and learning that they have to that they have to make that you have to make um it takes time so they're gonna have reasonable expectations that increase at reasonable intervals. The bad leader, on the other hand, is gonna expect you to perform perfectly all at once. You've been here three weeks, you should know what to do by now, right? Um, how about good leader or bad leader? Expects you to produce the same level of results no matter what kind of day you're having. You show up to work, you should be doing the job very well, every day. Same, no matter what. Anyone? Devil, yep. Um. <laughs> Devil, this goes for myself and my dog. Um, yeah, 
Actually, that's a good point, April. I mean, so, okay, so the bad, the bad leader um, is the one who's going to expect you to behave exactly the same way, do just as well, no matter what. In, it's, in real life, we have good days and bad days. And people who say, you know, leave your, leave your problems at the door when you show up to work, like, it's, it's kind of unfair. Grimskull gives the alien, the purple alien <laughs> emojis. Um, yeah, Karen, so, because every day isn't a good day. It's the, um, a good leader or at least a good parent, a good, a good guide is going to understand that we have good days and bad days. They're going to care about your well-being. They're going to listen when you've got problems and adjust their expectations for that day. If you need a sick day, okay, take a sick day, take a sick week. Um, <laughs> Grim Skull couldn't find the devil. My boss is an alien. <laughs> That's fine. You can use the alien. That works. They look, I mean, they look quite similar. It looks like just maybe a different style. Ah, found them. Got, got it. Got it. <laughs> um, okay. Um, almost, almost the last one. A uh, good leader or bad leader who inspires enthusiasm. Do we want enthusiastic, enthusiastic dogs? Maybe some of us do. Take a sick year. <laughs> yes, Kevin, take a sick year. I feel like I've had a sick year. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it, that that one actually, it really does apply, guys, with our dogs. Like it, it, it can, I don't know, this just happens. It's like sometimes we kind of expect dogs to be robots and and when they do things that are are bad, it's like, He's never, I don't know, he's never done that before. He's never snapped at somebody before. He's never, uh, you know, he's never done this. But hey, dogs have bad days. Dogs have things that pile up. They, with trigger stacking, absolutely applies to our dogs. Lots of hearts. Um, yes, good leader inspires enthusiasm. <laughs> um, they are, they are gonna, they're gonna motivate using things that get, us excited. You know, what do we want to work for? We want to work for a paycheck. Most of us want money. Um, we're going to work. I mean, but hey, you guys are giving me praise right now. And I'm, I, I will continue sh to show up for that. That's, <laughs> that's inspiring enthusiasm. Um, and, and so yeah, they're going to use things that motivate out of a desire for to work for things. Um, the bad leader, on the other hand, inspires fear. They're going to say, you're going to do this or else. You're going to do this or there will be consequences. Um, you can use negative consequences to motivate, or you can use rewards. <laughs> like, okay, my words are leaving me. It is the end of the day now. Um, are my hearts good here too? Yeah. Hearts are good everywhere. No, David, you're very good at... at um, giving the good things, the praise and the motivation. It's, you're right, it's me. I need to, I need to be a better mm, leader for myself. <laughs> Kevin says, they're robots only on the SpaceX build site. Wait, what? Are there dog robots? Wait a minute, fill me in. <laughs> they are not robots. Um, okay, last one. Good leader or bad leader? Expects you to do what they say because you're the boss. You're the, you're the parent. I'm big, you're small, I'm right, you're wrong, <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm strong, you're weak, I don't, I don't know, um, and they're super creepy, whoa, I need to, I need to find out about this, <laughs> um, yeah, people who, uh, rely on their position of authority for people to listen, uh, this is like the respect thing, guys, um, that's, that's not enough. A good leader is going to be someone who understands that you are going to get better effort, better results from happy, motivated employees who are cared for and who are, who are given respect. I give this animal respect. Hi, baby boy. <laughs> um, he's, he's going to want to comply. He's going to want to work for me. He's going to want to train. He's going to want to behave because I treat him well. Heath, hello, welcome. Welcome to the end of our stream today. No, um, 
April, this is so per pervasive with humans and dogs. Absolutely. It's, if you want to read a fun book about it, you guys, sorry, if you, or if you're not a reader, but if you are, check out uh, the book Coercion and Its Fallout by Murray Sidman. It is crazy how this applies to us humans. It's, it's nuts. Um, all right. So that is, that has been my good leader, bad leader game for the day. Um, thank you guys for playing. You're also very smart. <laughs> Does he, it's amazing how he knows it's time to go. He's like, you got somewhere to be, mom. My webinar is starting. <laughs> thank you. I know, I'll get there. Um, Dizzy is trying to tell me. Isn't that crazy? It's like he knows. He's such, I mean, and I didn't teach him that. He's a smart boy. Um, all right, so just just to wrap this up in a, in a nice little bow, guys. Um, to be a good leader for your dog, you don't need to do any of those arbitrary rules or those arbitrary things like touching your dog's muzzle those are not gonna teach your dog that they're a leader. How you establish yourself as a leader is to do basically four things. One, teach them the skills you want them to know. Train them, just, that's it. Dogs don't come knowing what we expect. The more you teach, the better they will be. And that could be the more skills or the deeper you go into one skill. You could teach your dog one thing, but just teach it really, really well, um, but teach them. If you want them to know things, teach them skills. Um, number two, set them up for success, right? Don't, again, they don't know what to do. They don't know what's wrong. Um, don't let them make the mistake so that you have to tell them no, wrong, eh, mm -mm, no. Um, understand that they will make mistakes. And so put up the gates, keep them on leash, prevent those mistakes as much as possible. Number three, be consistent. If you've got rules, stick with them. It's not fair to the dog or to an employee or anybody else if they're expected to abide by rules but the rules keep changing. That is frustrating as heck. <laughs> um, and finally, number four, remain calm and patient. This is the hard one, honestly, of, of all these. Keeping calm and patient is the hardest one because it's so, it can be so frustrating for us, for the, for the parent, for the leader, when you're trying to herd cats <laughs> or dogs or kids, um, but we it, it doesn't help anything to get frustrated and, and get mad and yell and all the things. You know, you gotta remember, dogs are not out to drive you mad. They are not out to try and be your boss. They are, they, they very innocently lack any concept of respect or right and wrong. They, they live in what is and what works they just need you to let them know and, and be consistent with the rules. And if you can remain calm throughout this, you'll be able to more effectively train and enforce rules. Um, that is how I think you can be a good leader. Uh, wait, oh, no no tagging on, on mobile. Isn't that frustrating? <laughs> Karen, thank you, I love you too. I will see you on Friday. Um, how, <laughs> the place you need tagging, you do not have tagging. Uh, <laughs> I can tell you who it wasn't. You're, wait, you're, you're watching from the bathtub? TMI, David. Yes, thank you, Heath. <laughs> kitty pool streams. We should do one from the kitty pool. I want to, as soon as it warms up, I would do want to have some fun with that kitty pool. We don't have a hot tub, but we can do kitty pool streams. <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> human, human city... I'm saving up for the 16 1.8 if my dog does not eat me out of house and home first. They will do that. Dizzy gets expensive too. All right, guys. Um, thank you for playing my game with me and for sticking around um, and listening to How to Be a Good Leader. Um, hopefully this can help you um, be a better leader for your dog or if you've got kids or if you're a boss or for anybody that you want to lead. Um, con the same concepts apply. Um, my dog is snuggled into my side right now. Velcro dog. I love the Velcro dogs. I got to go snuggle my dog and watch this webinar. Um, okay, cool. Love you guys so much. I will see you on Friday. If you haven't already, please hit subscribe on YouTube or if you're a Facebook user, 
follow or like um, so that you don't miss out on more fun content like this. And great. See you next time. <laughs>